surveillance video from the Chula Vista neighborhood where a missing mother of three lived captured sounds that appear to be six gunshots on the night Maya Miliete went missing. In a News 8 exclusive, our David Godfordson obtained an audio recording of those disturbing sounds, which has already been turned over to police. They sound like gunshots, six loud bangs in 20 seconds, captured by a surveillance camera on the outside of a house in the neighborhood where Maya Miliete lived with her husband and three children. At first, a cluster of five bangs can be heard, then a dog in the neighborhood starts barking, then there's a 10 second gap and a final bang. The neighbor who gave News 8 the recording did not want the video part of it aired on TV because it identifies their house, but the audio is clear. The neighbor told us it was recorded around 10 p.m. on Thursday, January 7th, the same night Maya Miliete went missing and the same night her husband Larry reportedly had an argument with his wife. That date was also the last time anybody ever heard from the missing 39-year-old. Uh, how is the family doing with all of this uh, speculation? The speculation is Maya, she go by herself, okay? Just like the first statement, right? News 8 caught up with Larry Miliete's father, Benito, on Thursday. He was walking to the park with two of his grandchildren. We asked him about the ongoing search for Maya. The family of Maya is looking for a dead body. We're still waiting. We also asked about the loud bangs we heard on the neighbor's surveillance video. Did anybody hear any gunshots on that night? No gunshot, nothing at all. So six bangs around 10 o'clock that night. Then about 35 minutes later, the neighbor tells us that same camera recorded audio that sounded like children playing in a backyard. And uh, um, we still don't know the significance of all this to the investigation, but that audio of the children playing, that would have been around 1030 at night. Steve, back to you. Well, without question, David, that audio of what appears to be gunshots is chilling. So the big question, what are Chula Vista police saying about this recording? Are they aware of it? They're aware of it. Chula Vista police have had this recording for the past three months, according to the neighbor. And uh, 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 the department has not named any suspects. Larry Millette has not been named a suspect in this case. We reached out to Chula Vista police, told them we had this audio, a captain emailed us back saying they have no comment on evidence in the case. Mm. All right, and Dr. Phil is gonna have more on that as well. So thank you, David. Dr. Phil is discussing the Maya Malete case on his show next week. Coming up on Monday, new interviews reveal never before heard details surrounding Maya's disappearance. Among those appearing on the show are family attorney Billy Little, who did a walkthrough of the Malete home in the presence of Maya's husband, Larry, shortly after she disappeared. Then, on February 8th, she's missing. Correct. She's never seen again. Correct. So she's filling out paperwork for, with a divorce lawyer on the 7th and goes missing on the 8th. That's, that's correct. You can watch the entire interview on Dr. Phil this coming Monday at 3 p.m. right here on CBS 8. A man was taken into custody this afternoon following a bizarre slow speed chase across the South Bay it began around noon when police received reports of a man threatening someone with a gun. The man led officers over surface streets across several freeways at times running red lights and stop signs. About two hours later, police were able to surround and block his car in and arrest him. Authorities are investigating two deadly shootings in South Carolina and Texas tonight. We're going to have more on those coming up. They come after a wave of high profile mass shootings in Georgia and Colorado. And now President Biden is taking executive actions on gun control. They include orders for the Justice Department to draft red flag legislation that states can model to keep guns out of the hands of people who are facing mental health issues. New rules will also be created for ghost guns. Those are self-assembled weapons that don't require a serial number. 
The president also wants a 60 day review of how stabilizing braces for pistols are regulated, and he's calling on Congress to act on two background check bills that have already been passed by the House. They've offered plenty of thoughts and prayers, members of Congress, but they've passed not a single new federal law to reduce gun violence. President Biden is also calling on Congress to pass an assault weapons ban. The top House Republican Kevin McCarthy is speaking out, calling it an infringement on the right to bear arms. Officials say former NFL player Philip Adams shot and killed five people, including a five year old boy, before killing himself this morning in South Carolina. Well known Rock Hill doctor Robert Leslie, his wife, and their two grandchildren were all killed. Two handymen working outside their home were also shot, one in critical condition, the other one died at the scene. Investigators say they don't know why Adams targeted the family, though the Associated Press reports that Adams had been treated by Leslie in the past. Meantime, one person is dead and four others are injured after a shooting at a cabinet business in Bryan, Texas today. Officials say a state trooper was also shot and seriously injured during a manhunt for the suspect who was then taken into custody. Officials believe the suspected shooter was an employee at the company, Kentmore Cabinets. Investigators are still working to determine a motive and identify the victim. Here in San Diego, police are seeing a huge spike in gun related crimes, including confiscating those so called ghost guns we were just talking about. News 8 Shannon Handy spoke exclusively with San Diego Police Chief David Nislight today. She has more on the alarming numbers and what the department is doing about it. Steve Chief Nislight was very transparent about this issue, saying the gun problem in San Diego is the worst he's seen since starting here more than 30 years ago. You know, I've been doing this since 1988. I cannot recall a time where our officers are encountering more firearms in public than ever before. These are just some of the firearms San Diego police officers have confiscated since the start of this year. They range from handguns to shotguns and assault rifles. San Diego Police Chief David Nislai says nearly one in four are ghost guns, meaning they have no serial number, making them untraceable. That means anybody who's prohibited because of their mental illness or because of prior felony convictions can still purchase a firearm, have it FedExed overnight, and have a gun in their hands the following day. In 2020, the department saw a 169% increase in ghost guns compared to 2019. 2021 is looking to surpass that. These statistics further show the increase. In 2019, ghost guns made up 4% of all guns confiscated by SDPD. That number jumped to 12% in 2020, and it's now at 22%. And that's just part of the problem. In 2020, we saw a 75% increase in those being arrested that were convicted felons with a firearm. Gunshot calls have also gone up, so have shootings. January and February saw a 50% increase compared to 2020. Chief Nislight says there are several contributing factors, the pandemic being the most obvious one. People are out of school, people are out of work, so there's a lot of anxiety and angst about everything. Not only that, but with court services reduced or closed, he says criminals feel invincible. People feel emboldened right now to commit crime and do not believe they're going to be held accountable. Chief Nislight maintains he's working to combat these alarming trends. Last month, alongside the mayor and other community leaders, he unveiled a new program called No Shots Fired, which works directly with gang members in hopes of getting them out of that lifestyle. He's also putting more officers and investigators on the streets and planning a gun buyback event in early June. No questions asked. You drop off a handgun, a shotgun, a rifle, and you'll get a gift card anywhere between $100 and $200. For him, it's not just about curbing crime, but making the community feel safe. Not only are we trying to drive down the crime, but the fear of crime. Details regarding that gun buyback event are still being worked on. As for more officers on the streets, right now the department is 108 officers short. They are actively recruiting for more. All right, Shannon, thanks. Dozens of people living at a homeless encampment in Oceanside are being forced to leave, but the city will be giving them free hotel and motel stays for a period of time and offer them programs that can help get them back on their feet. Meantime, the city says it's in the process of opening its first year round homeless shelter. The encampment is located just east of the five on South Oceanside Boulevard. News 8's Alicia Summers joins us from the site with more. They call this place Fallville because it's a place where people fall here on South Oceanside Boulevard. These people have been living here for the past few months inside these tents. Those who live here tell me it started as a clean, peaceful area, but now the city says they need to be out by Saturday. More than 
50 people live at this Oceanside homeless encampment, including Rodney McDow, who feels as though the city is throwing them out like trash. They're pushing us out of here by force. Since the city has no long-term homeless shelter, this was a place for those who had nowhere else to go. People involved in each other's lives in ways that was giving them an inner worth to get, to want to live, to want to get off drugs or do something that's constructive. Stephen came here two months ago. It's his first time being homeless after losing his job in the hospitality industry. I just think that um, the government has kind of let everybody down because they don't have no affordable housing for anybody. An Oceanside City Code, Chapter 20, prohibits illegal encampments, but it hasn't been enforced. In a city council meeting last night, staff recommended they enforce the code for preservation of public peace, health, and safety after a number of issues have arisen. We had three fentanyl overdoses in one day. The Starbucks lobby is now closed indefinitely due to um, some of the issues, one of their staff members was attacked. Other issues are some contamination issues due to human waste. The city is clearing this camp out now, but it's offering everyone a temporary place to stay. The city council approved um, hotel vouchers for those that are going to be displaced from this encampment. Mick Go doesn't think this will solve the long-term cycle of homelessness. Who knows if that's going to cause them to end up in someone's backyard, you understand? There's desperation that goes on here. The city says it's in the process of setting up Oceanside's first year-round homeless shelter funded in part by Measure X, approved by voters in 2018. The goal is to have the shelter operational within the year. It was nice talking to you, Mr. You too, sir. Oh, yeah, you know. And those who choose to take a hotel voucher will be in the hotel getting assistance and help for long-term housing and other programs.